Hey everyone, uh, this video is going to probably be a little longer than the other uh, shortcut videos that I've done, but uh, I'm going to show you the steps that I go through to make a inner cover for your beehive. So, oh, and I hope that I don't go out of order. All right, when you are going ahead and making all your mediums and your deeps like I've showed in other videos, there is a step in there where you are taking your raw wood over there and you cut it to width, but you also then have to cut the height of the board because the lumber that you buy at the store, you can't get in the perfect dimensions. You have to get it a little bit bigger. So for deeps, um, you end up with tons and tons of this long stock that's left over. Some people may use it for garden steaks. Some people just throw it in a wood burning stove and uh, heat their wood shop and stuff, but you can actually use it later on for making <coughs> um, parts of bottom boards. You can use it for making your inner covers, things like that. So don't throw it away. So essentially, I know my router bit here is set up for another stage I'm going to talk about, but this bit right here, this one is going to make your inner covers perfect for you. So if you need to check out the dimensions or anything, this is a tongue and groove bit that you can get. It does a nice central cut that's a quarter inch thick, and it gives you a half inch of depth there from left to right, and it works perfect with three quarter inch wood. What this allows me to do is cut a channel then in that long strip of wood um, that you get off of cutting a deep, so you get uh, 19 and 7 8 inch long piece of wood, which is perfect then for your inner cover. But I will set my router table up here with the bit in there and the fence so that I can just do that half inch slit down the wood there. And I'm sorry, I really wish I could just piece together a video. I just don't have video editing software to be able to take a 30 second video here and combine it with a minute and a half there and etc. and stuff. But to show you, I set the depth so that just that top blade there is going to cut down the center of that piece and create the initial initial run. And I'll go ahead and I'll process up like 120 of these so I can do a 60 inner cover run. I will then go and take the shorter pieces that you get off of your front your front plates on those deep boxes there and these are an inch and a half wide, so you get your inch here, you get an inch here lip, and then you get that half inch depth. I'll explain this further as we go along here, but I'll take all those 16 and a quarter inch pieces, and again, I'll cut a center, central channel on there. Now I've got a whole bucket of both lengths of pieces done. The long ones are done, done. However, your shorter ones, you are going to have to notch so that they can then, well, I can't do this one-handed, but this will then create a notch that can go ahead and pop inside of your other piece and start creating your frame. To do that, you would take that same bit and instead of it just cutting with just the top piece there, we go ahead and we raise it up a little higher in the table. And then we're going to, we pass our boards through there so that it cuts the ends off. Oh, this video is going to be horrible here compared to my others. But I'm trying to just give you practical application. So anyhow, as you pass the piece down, it instead goes ahead and cuts your notch out there. Again, you'll have your your backstop on your router table set here so it only allows the half inch cut. Plus inside there, that bit um, only allows it to go half inch depth too. So you get these beautiful little grooves then that as I showed, fit right into there all snug and nice. All right, what's the next step after that? All 
I have piles and piles of quarter inch plywood that I've gotten here and I've cut it all down so that it instead of being 19 and 7 eighths is oh let's see here two inches off of that 17 and 7 eighths inch long and the width of it then is 14 and a quarter inches wide because our framework for the beehive is going to take up an inch on this side and then it's going to take up another inch on this side and vice versa for the ends there so our pieces here you got to take two inches off the standard lengths off dimensions to get it in here um, you're probably asking well your piece is really an inch and a half wide and an inch and a half wide for the two boards but don't forget you've got the recessed space there of a half inch on both sides so we're just going to take two inches off of each measurement now for this next cut I have one of these um, round nose bits and there's the dimensions on it if you need it at all but I go ahead and I set the router table up like thus and I just quick screw into my table a couple of stops because again I like to build my stuff fairly quickly and I repeat the process over and over and over again it doesn't offend me if I'm gonna just go ahead and screw something in but maybe you want to use clamps and not damage your table at all but essentially when this is running this allows you to take your board set it in here and if this was a brand new board I'd set in here and just slowly press it until the blade pops through and then you just slide it over to your other stop and then you just pop your board up set it on your done pile grab your next one grab your next one grab your next one so on so you can get through this in a pretty um, expedited fashion so I I'll take you on over to the table and we'll actually assemble one of these quick I say quick again I'm trying to do this one-handed here so unfortunately nothing works very quick normally I run a bead of glue all the way down this but for the video purposes we're just going to skip that stage and I'll show you it quick here but So, pieces like that there, pop it in, we center it halvesies. This piece here, whoops, let me touch base. On all the other videos um, for assembling the boxes, I showed you how to do the frame rest with the dado blade. Same principle here for doing these pieces. I have a dado blade. That's a blade that's just stacked, uh, stacked saw blades, so it allows you to do a grooved cut. But uh, essentially I had it here, and I could lay out five or six of these pieces at once, and I'd lay another board on top, and i just slide them all through there and cut my grooves real quick. But... Um, if you've watched my box building video, then you know how the dado works, and it actually is a live video of me cutting. So, this just goes in here like that. And I have another 60 of these pieces that have no dado cut in it. Pops in there like that. And if you cut everything nice, you won't have any overlap or extra on the ends and stuff. It'll just go together real nice and slick. So here you have your hive cover then. Um, again, I normally run glue on the inside, on the insides of all of my edges before I actually slap them onto the plywood there in the center. And, uh, then afterward remember you have those ears that are in there I like to go ahead and just staple staple put two staples through each of the corners so you end up with something there like that 
let the glue dry on these and voila you've got a ton of inner covers and since uh, all of your outside wood was all scrap off of doing your deeps um, really all you're buying is that quarter inch plywood depending on where you get it you might get it for $12 a sheet you might get it on up to $18 a sheet but uh, you can get 15 pieces out of a 4x8 sheet of plywood so we're talking like anywhere from 90 cents to maybe a buck 30 is all you're gonna have invested in doing your own inner covers a fair amount of labor and maybe some trial and error on your machines but still we're talking 90 cents to like a buck 30 for your inner covers all right take care